Do you suffer from weak two-handed backhand-itis? You have a two-handed backhand and it's just weak and it just drives you nuts because it seems like you've worked on so many things, your two-handed backhand's not getting any better. Well, in this video, I'm gonna drop down three tips that I think will really improve your backhand. So make sure you stay tuned. Like I said, in this video, we're gonna talk about how to improve your two-handed backhand and make it not so weak so people don't pick on it. There's three main concepts that I think everybody needs to understand for any ground strokes. There's three main categories that if you understand, you can basically improve any stroke in your tennis game. But we're gonna relate this just to the back end today. The analogy I like to use is the analogy of a car. And the three most important parts of a car are what? It's the engine, the steering wheel, and the wheels. The engine provides the power for the car to go somewhere. The steering wheel helps you direct the car and the wheels get you to where you're trying to go. And you're probably saying, Kevin, how does this relate to my tennis game, especially my backhand, because that's what I'm here for. Well, listen up. The way your body works provides the power, hence rotation. The more you learn how to rotate your body, especially on the two-handed backhand, the more power you're gonna have. Your steering wheel is how you control and change the racket face at contact and the racket path leading to contact and your wheels are your footwork if you take basically every stroke and break it down into these categories you're going to find out that it's not that hard to improve your back end and i'm going to show you how to do that in this video so let's break it down the first part the engine what do you mean kevin by the engine well the engine of any ground stroke and pretty much any stroke you have, whether it be the serve, even the volley, even the forehand or the backhand, and the slice means most of the energy, the swinging force comes from your body rotating. Tennis is a rotational sport, meaning that we're not just like, uh, hey, I'm gonna just poke at the ball. You wanna rotate into the ball. And most players struggle with this. So when they're hitting two-handed backhands, what do you see people doing? They're kind of like poking at the ball and not rotating their body through the shot. Next, the steering wheel. Well, maybe you are rotating the ball, but you lack consistency. You lack the ability to place the ball where you want. There's a saying, the racket face sends it and the path bends it. And this is super important. This is probably one of the most important things in tennis. And you might not even be really focusing on it, meaning that wherever the racket face looks at contact, that's where the ball's gonna go. End of point, okay? What this means is if your racket face is facing down at contact, the ball's going to go down. If it's facing too open, it's going to go too high. If it's facing vertical, it'll go vertical. So what this means is your consistency is going to come down to where your racket face is looking. And if you want topspin, it comes down to the path, meaning combining the path and the racket face. If my racket face is coming up with the right racket face, you achieve topspin. This is why you see the pros get in these crazy positions and still make the ball because they understand that the racket face is what's going to determine where the ball is going to go at contact. Just by understanding those two things, if I rotate and have my racket face right at contact, guess what? you have power and you have the ability to place the ball wherever you want. That's 90% of the game. Now let's talk about the wheels because the wheels are so important. And I think this is one misunderstood thing where a lot of players kind of separate it. They think of footwork as some separate entity where it's like, oh, I just need to move my feet really fast. Uh, well, that's not the case. Your footwork actually sets your engine up, especially when you're moving. So there's certain footwork patterns, like if I step like this and I rotate, you can see how I can't really rotate anymore. So it's really important that you set your feet up in a way that allows you to rotate. And that's why the footwork is so important. When you add these three things together now, you have power coming from your swing, you have direction and height coming from the racket face, and then you have the ability to do the same thing, create this rotation and the racket face angle on the run consistently. Hence, not having a weak back anymore. So now let's go through a couple drills to work on two phases of this which is your rotation and your racket face. So the very first drill we're gonna talk about is a rotational drill. Again, tennis is a rotational sport. And what that means is, if you look at other sports like golf, like baseball, what's the big focus? The big emphasis is on using their hips to generate the racketed speed that they want, or the club speed, or the bat speed. Well, it's no different in tennis. The big disconnect is a lot of players are hitting their backhands, and you can see how my hips aren't moving. So what we want to do is focus on the hips moving. A great way of doing this, I think, is if you just stand sideways, two things you need to focus on is making sure your feet are set up that allow you to rotate. Now, that's not necessarily footwork, and I'll show you why. What I mean by this is turning and opening up your toe a little bit. By opening up your toe, it'll allow your hip to clear, and you'll understand why in a second. So here's the drill. I want you to take your racket, take the butt of the racket, and stick it on the side of your hip here, and then turn sideways. So the racket should be pointing back towards the fence. Take your foot and just slightly open it. Now, 
How do you get the racket to contact? The only way you can do this without moving the racket independently of your hip is to rotate your hip. And this is a great drill to have you have the sense of rotating your hip through. And this is exactly what you want to do. What do you see baseball players doing? They're really focusing on how they can rotate the hip. Golfers, rotating the hip. No different. Tennis, we want to rotate the hip. So what I want you to do is take a couple shadow swings where all you're going to do is step and rotate. Step and rotate. Once we get a hang of this and you feel the rotation, now you can use a ball. And from here, all we're going to do is take a ball and set up everything. Uh, it looks like a left-handed forehand for a second, but you'll see why it's different. So I'm going to set up everything, but here's what we want to do. We want to focus on not moving the racket with just my arms. We want to focus on moving the racket with my hips. And you can see there's a big difference between this movement, which a lot of players practice, and this movement which a lot of players don't practice. And this is the start of making sure you can rotate in the ball. So if we're here, I'm gonna drop and rotate the ball. There, it got a little close on me, but I still rotated my hips and that's the important part. I don't care where the ball's going in this drill. Okay, here, and you can really see how smooth that is compared to an action where if I just move my arms and I haven't moved my hips. You want to make sure you're moving your hips in this drill because this is the engine. The faster you move your hips, the faster your racket's going to go under control. The big mistake a lot of players are making is what they're doing is they're moving their arms but then they're tensing up. So not only they're slowing down but by tensing up it messes us up in the next phase when we're talking about the steering. It makes it hard for us to steer because we're so tense and we don't want that. So now let's talk about the steering. Now we're going to do a racket face drill. Now what this drill is going to really help you be more aware of where your racket face is pointing at contact and how you can adjust and change it. Because if you can adjust and change your racket face at contact, it really means you can control where the ball is going to go. And that's so important if you want to be consistent, which means you don't have a weak back end. Because one thing about having a weak back end is you can't get the ball in play. And generally that comes from these elements that I've talked about but you can still get the ball in play if you don't have all of them together as long as you have the racket face working out for you. So what we're going to do is do the exact same thing we did before where we dropped and hit the ball, but we're going to open up the racket face so you can see what happens. So when I open up the racket face, you can really see how the ball has a lot of shape and it goes high over the net. Now what happens if I close the racket face? Well if I close the racket face, now look what happens to the ball. So when you're ever in a match and you're hitting a lot of balls in the net, instead of thinking, Oh, well, I got to do all this stuff. I got to do, yes, yes, you might have to move your feet more or turn your hips more. But guess what? That all relates back to how it interacts with the racket face. Most people are thinking, oh, I got to do this with my arm or the question is I got to turn my hips here. Well, really, it's all about manipulating the racket face. If you can do that at contact, you're going to be more successful. So what we want to do is make sure the racket face is vertical or even slightly open depending on how fast we want to swing. And if it is like that, what you're going to notice is you get the ball now where it's like uh, four or five feet over the net and that's what I want. Now, if I didn't particularly want that ball, I would just either open up the racket face and hit it higher or close the racket face and hit it a little bit lower. But I want you to understand that this is a very subtle change. It's not a drastic, I'm going to open up my racket face and most people bounce back and forth between too big of changes compared to being very minimal in the change. And that's super important to understand to be able to master and control your racket. In summary, you have to make sure you understand three major concepts to make sure your backhand's not weak. Number one is the engine. Tennis is a rotational sport, meaning that everything we're gonna do as far as hitting a backhand, a forehand, even a serve, comes down to rotation. And if that's the case, then our engine, how we use our body, is gonna dictate how much racketed speed we can get without having to use a lot of effort. And this is a huge difference where players are muscling and getting tight, and the pros, you see them very smoothly rotate their body and get a ton of pace from it, and that's why. Number two, steering. How do you get the ball to go inside the court? And it comes down to opening and closing the racket face. So at contact, the racket is looking where you want the ball to go. It's that simple. I know it's scary, but really focus. If you're having trouble making the ball, it's going too long or going in the net, start adjusting your racket face because that's going to make a huge difference. Number three is your footwork. Footwork matters, not just for the sake of getting to the ball, but your footwork actually sets you up to rotate. 
And so if you use footwork patterns that cut you off and don't allow you to rotate, guess what's gonna happen? You're not gonna be able to use your engine, which basically you're not gonna be able to have any power on the ball. So we're gonna take you from having a weak backhand to one that's gonna be solid or even have the ability to create more pace and power under control if you can set up your footwork on the run. If you like this video, make sure you check out TotalTennisDomination.org where we have more great videos just like this, helping you get your tennis game to the next level. Take care.